Welcome. This is Christopher Stapleton. I am uh, doing some nice, this is cold water. My name is Christopher Stapleton. Uh, I've set up my art space and we're going to start drawing some art. I want to do something new and more exciting. So I'm starting to start the stream and I hope that you enjoy this, uh, this process. I'm still in the process of learning how to set up my cameras so I can have multiple cameras and whatnot without uh, um, running like an OBS and whatnot. But I have this artwork here in the bottom that uh, will be helpful. Um, so what I'd like to do is, let's see here. Um, I have various pencils here. And... Uh, we're going to be using basically uh, pencil and paper and uh, just learning how to uh, draw uh, various spheres and cubes using squares and circles. And this is a really easy process. Uh, for whatever reason, the camera is flew backwards. So I might have to, I might look backwards here because when I draw, um, for whatever reason, I need to fix that later, but um, uh, let's see if I can fix that now. Yeah, I can just flip it. If it'll work. Not sure if it'll fit on YouTube or not, but... Anyways, so we are live. My name is Christopher Stapleton. I'm with Pullway Fire Studio. Like I said, you're going to be seeing most of this artwork on paper. And uh, I face, I'll learn how to put in a, um, I know I can use OBS and whatnot to create uh, various types of cameras and slides. and But trying to do it all on a laptop is very challenging. So. Um, I wish YouTube would allow to have two cameras so you can have like a picture down here. Uh, so, you know, like <laughs> maybe I could share my screen or somehow I have, I just purchased uh, Google meet. And so uh, I'm trying to learn how to use Google meet also to go live. But for now we will just uh, use what we have and um, get to it. Let's see if I can uh, change my camera view. Not sure if it's going to let me do that right now. Anyways, so if you're online, feel free to hop in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, uh, so you know, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Christopher Stapleton, like I said. I went to the Art Institute of Seattle back in like 2003 to 2010. I was in the animation program for media arts and animation, as well as game design. And I got a degree in game design. They call it the, the Bachelor of Fine Arts and Media Arts and Animation was the first one that I had. The second one was called the uh, Bachelor of Fine Arts in Game Art and Design. So that's what I went into and been using um, my skills to basically be a full-time artist pretty much all my life. So I want to show how we can create some of this content here. And it's important to understand be backwards. I know for whatever reason this is backwards. So uh, you have black here and you've got white here. And um, so the importance of blacks and whites and the contrast in between is called a gradient. So let's get a new sheet of paper. I got a camera here and I'm just relaxing. Got a new sheet of paper and it's backwards. So I know that anyways, um, I've got some pencils. So these are the, uh, they're called um, 
don't know if that's going to focus or not. I'm using a GoPro and they're just some basic pencils that I got at Walmart. It doesn't have to be anything special. Uh, I'm going to scoot this down. So um, what we can do is you're seeing a shadow of uh, my microphone and stuff. And uh, so we'll just have to deal with a little bit of that now until we can um, start to customize content so that it'll be more available and uh, ready and whatnot. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave it in the chat. So basically, yeah, that's my chat. And I'm just starting afresh. So we have a piece of paper here. I already have some... This, this is really soft lead. It is a, um, it says uh, simply, can't even see it, simply sketching 2B. So I'm going to talk about uh, the hardness of lead, like graphite. Uh, in, they didn't use lead in pencils for a long time, so they've been using graphite. And um, so basically you've got, a line here and a line here and a line here and a line here and what you do is i'm going to teach you about the whole spectrum of graphite in a pencil this is important because it's going to be able to apply to uh, what's going on in uh, when we start drawing circles and squares and we're going to talk about uh, how to hold a pen when you write, hold a pencil, like for example, like this. When you draw, you're going to hold a pencil like this. When you write, you want to hold a pencil like this because they kind of taught us that in school. When we were really, really little, they taught us kind of to use our pencils this way, to use our wrist, and to kind of like write or when I was in school, we learned cursive, which was interesting. And we don't really use cursive much today. We're more using print and computers and whatnot. So, but uh, for these example, I want to show you uh, a little bit of how uh, um, this end right here is going to be, um, probably should do it white, but I'm going to do it black. So we'll just put, um, we're going to put B over here. And then um, this is like a gradation between hard lead. And I know it's backwards. I'm sorry about that. For whatever reason, I got to learn how to flip it around in YouTube uh, so it matches. And I couldn't find an option for it right now. So it's going to be backwards, <laughs> which is kind of odd. And I flipped it around on the GoPro, but I guess I have to redo it. And I'm uh, just learning. So. Anyways, so I got B, and then you've got F here, which means uh, if you have a pencil that says an F, um, it's like the fine, it's like a fine tip pencil, and those are really really hard leads. And then you've got like H. Um, so. I can't remember if it goes like this or not, but we're just going to write it like that. And so B is like soft lead because it represents black, how black the lead is. And I'm just going to draw and show you. If we kind of split this in half and we just do some sections like that. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we're just going to do seven. I guess we could just do one more. So then we've got uh, total black, which would be as hard as you can press with a soft lead. So you got B, and this is a 2B. So I'm going to put 2B here. So the cool thing about it is, is I've got these other pencils here. This guy is a... Uh, a 4B. So I'm going to write 2B here, and then I'm just going to 
or try to go as black as I can. And then trying to figure out my camera situation too. So, but I got the 4B. So this is a, sorry, this is a like a more robust, darker, softer lead. But if I press that harder, it's almost like the 2B. There's not too much gradation with it, but uh, you kind of want to practice like, for example, if I do 2B here on this line, I'm going to just put this pencil down for a second. So I grab my 2B pencil and just like shade in as dark as you can get. And this is going to be black and white. Notice I'm holding the pencil like when I'm writing. should be holding it like this. Uh, it's kind of dull, so I'm going to grab my pencil sharpener. And I got a sh sharper pencil now. So what I want to do is I want to hold the pencil like this. And the reason you want to do that is because you're not using your uh, your wrist to pivot. You're using your elbow and your shoulder to draw circles. And shading will be a lot easier. So notice how fast that comes in. And you just want to be lighter and lighter and you don't press so hard. Maybe I was pressed a little bit too hard, but that's okay. That comes in where this kneaded eraser comes in. Uh, I learned at the Art Institute of Seattle that you don't use racers. <laughs> it's not that you can't, but racers have a specific purpose. Uh, I like to use kneaded erasers to lift content. So like if I have too much graphite down, I can lift that graphite right off the page. So it'll make it a lot more white. And so what my purpose was to show a transition between black and white. And this is important because when you're drawing with pencils, um, the darkest point and the lightest point is what's going to bring the contrast to your drawings. So let's for, for example, we won't worry about adding in more other pencils. I've got some other one here that I use. The kneaded eraser, I showed you how to use that. You can even stretch it like this. It's like a gum eraser. You can stretch it and mold it in pretty much any, any size that you want. So if you want it to be pointed, you can take some of that off and it will come right on to the thing here. So basically, now what we do is uh, you take your pencil like this and you hold it in your hand. And if you want it to be more pointed, you turn it up like that, just slightly when you're drawing. So for example, if I do a circle, I'm going to do a circle like this. I'm going to draw a circle. And it almost looks like a ball if you wanted to create like a, a, a basketball or a pumpkin or a tennis ball. And uh, so I'm giving the circle, a basic circle that I just created in about under two seconds. So one, two maybe five seconds, 10 seconds, depending on how much time you want to spend on them. But basically all you do is just learn to draw circles like that. They don't have to be anything fancy. This is mostly for you when you draw. And all you have to do is just get comfortable with drawing 
circles to start with. And we once we learn how to, like on this guy right here, we can all see it almost looks like a cone. Like if you're looking at it like this, like that, you can almost see this. It looks like a cylinder, like if you're looking at a soda can. And I, I just did that on accident. So the soda can almost looks like you're looking at it right here from a top view. And anyhow, so these are just happy accidents that actually were made into the whole situation. And um, so when we draw and we're shading, Shading is really like a valuable thing to learn because the pencil will pretty much do all the work. All you have to do is just move your hand. <laughs> so your pencil is the tool and you are the artist and you get to um, determine where you want your arm to go. And it doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be, uh, uh, I'm drawing a circle, you know just takes forever and it's hard on your body you can feel it when you draw is it just it's hard on your body when you draw a circle it should be natural and dynamic like that and when you shade it be something like this you shade a little bit and then you leave some white at the top and then it get darker and darker ever so slightly so I'll add some darkness to it. So if we determine where the light is coming from also, that's important. So I just made this, this circle. If I add, take my needed eraser and I, sorry, I put my pencil down for a second. Then I come here and just grab some of this here and grab some of that here. You can see that it created it into kind of a sphere looking shape. A sphere is how we can make the basic building blocks of characters, balls, animating balls, bouncing, um, different things like that. And so um, let's talk about uh, doing a square. So Um, squares are pretty much the same thing. Uh, I'm going to keep drawing a couple more. I'm going to do a square on this next page, but I want to draw a couple more circles just to really get the, the point across because I want to make some things and just see what I can start making with overlaying circles on top of each other. And it's like when you start to make stuff, you'll start to see how these circles can really just, your mind can go wild. It's like a, a curved, it almost looks like a slinky or if you can like a part of an arm or it looks like a neck of a head with someone's I don't know, kind of a tilt of a neck with a, the half star of the head. Uh, the back of a skull in a sense but or it could be like a slinky that's on its side if we added some more or it could be like a light bulb <laughs> so it's kind of interesting i'm gonna turn a page over here we can make some squares and so squares are really fun to make too because they're not hard and you can use squares because um, the squares will allow you to make cubes and I'll show you how to do that. So basically you hold your pencil like this and you're going to just draw out a square. It doesn't have to be anything pretty. Just make it like, um, not sure the actual terminology, but I think it's called a concentric square. It means it's kind of the same portions all the way around based on a 90 degree angle we learned in, in math 
way back in high school. That's when I learned it for sure was doing math in high school and in college. And so I went to Art Institute of Seattle and we didn't really have to do math very much. I was able to skip out some of those classes. And so anyways, um, the cool thing about this square is you can create a cube really, really easily. How you do that is you draw another square like this. This is a really, this is a way that I learned from a guy at Disney. And he says that you go like this. He used to work at Disney. And I know it looks like a parallelogram right now. And that's mostly because the view um, is backwards and you're seeing it backwards when I'm drawing it forwards. So it kind of looks like a parallelogram in my mind, because if you're able to see it the way I'm drawing it flipped around, um, you're seeing it one way and I'm seeing it another, which is important because when you're shading objects, you want to figure out where light direction is coming from because it'll change depending on how you're looking at it. You might be looking at it coming from this way and I might be looking at it coming from this way or coming from the top or the bottom. And so it can change in your mind because it's like an optical illusion. And so what you want to do is you want to shade these objects, but you need to figure out where your light source is coming for. So say we hold a pencil like this and you just draw a light source of how the light is hitting the object. So the object is being lit from this source. I'm going to draw out a line here, draw out a line here. And so that's how we're going to create shadows and figure out if the light is hitting on the top here, how can we make, you know, the shadow is going to be around the sides because light hits the top, it's going to be lighter on top, and dark side corners and whatnot. So let's go ahead and darken the corners. So if this is going to be lightest, this one would be darker, and that one would be a less mid-tone darkish color. So I'm going to shade in just a flat shade. Like this. And you can start, start to see almost through x-ray vision that that side is, is sh shaded flat. What I should have done is grab this needed eraser and put out these lines first. And on the top. But it's okay. So you can kind of see x-ray vision into the box which is all right. So I'm gonna do this side darker still. I'm gonna shade this one a little bit the same color, the same value. And there's words that we're gonna talk about that are important to understand. And I'll make a video about those also. We talked about um, in different video. But if you hear me talking about value or saturation or contrast or things like this, uh, I'll explain those in a different video. That way, where they're um, easier to digest. But let's just have fun drawing right now. So I'm going to add this one's kind of the same color as that one. I'm going to make it darker now. What I'm doing is I'm taking it and I'm pressing it this way. I'm pressing it down what I'm drawing, but very slightly. So that's enabling to put more graphite down on the paper onto the page. Like that. So you can see that the light direction is coming this way. More light is going to be on this side, but it's going to be still darker with the shadow. The light's going to be hitting this top, and it's going to be very, very bright. The type of light depends on what you're trying to create also. So with this cube, 
that we can see a little bit of x-ray vision from also is that uh, there's types of shadows also. So um, if we just take this, and this isn't going to be a perfect shadow. So but what you can do is kind of come in here and you take the shadow from the light, these lines, and extend in here, like so. Extend this line here, like that. And then I'm going to create another cast shadow. And what this will do is allow me to pull out the shadow here, and pull out the shadow here. Because if it was hitting this corner, we'd probably have something like, I'm going to take this measurement here and bring it down. And I'm going to say the point here. So I'm going to follow this line here to about right there, make a point there. I'm going to take this line about right here. I'm doing it halfway. It's not perfect, but... Um, and I've always struggled with shadows too. So like, um, knowing how far the shadow would look perfectly is, you know, the technicality of it is not, uh, um, is not important when you're just doing basic shapes. So we don't really worry about it, but for now I'm going to come out here and then kind of come off the page and it's going to have a line. So this line is going to go over here. But how far it comes out, it's going to be pretty far. So let's just keep it like that. And so let's draw something like, because if the light's coming this way, it's kind of a big box. So I'm thinking it's going to come like this. And like that and I'm just drawing really lightly first and then uh, what I'm thinking is it's gonna come out all the way like that and then it's come like this something like I'm not sure something like that That might be wrong, but I'm not sure. It's kind of an odd um, angle, too. So it could be wider, like right here. That could be wider or not. I'm not sure. But I really like just creating a shadow. So this is called a cat shadow. And then uh, you've got core shadows, which are these right here. You've got a core shadow that comes along the bottom because you've got bounce light. And what bounce light is, is this, when you have light that comes down and bounces off the surface and bounces onto that surface, part of the box is casting a shadow that cast ambient occlusion. So there's lots of terms that I'm going to be talking about. And I'm going to write these out. So this is cast shadow. I know it's going to be backwards. Uh, this is a cast shadow. These are shadows. Um, darker shadows and lighter shadows. This is a mid-tone. Mid-shadow. Um, this is your darkest shadow. This area down in here is called a core shadow.
we kind of blend it into and if it's going to be on this side it's going to be on that side and the reason it's there's a core shadow here is because there's ambient occlusion around this so it's going to come out like this there's going to be this occlusion of shadow here also and it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter and the more the more time that you spend on this the better the more patience that you develop and more time that you allow yourself to just relax and enjoy yourself so this is kind of it called a occlusion and you blend it in a little bit more like that so I'm gonna make some more occlusion If you have ever noticed, occlusion is basically um, like if you look up in the corners of a ceiling, it's really dark in a corner and it's darker on the edges of the corners rather than in the center where the light is being cast out. So on all these corners, it's going to look a little bit darker and we're trying to mimic that into uh, cast shadow. Something like that. Yeah, so I'm thinking that's the way it's going to go because uh, if it was to this point here or this point here, this line would actually protrude out this way. So I'm just not sure if this is going to be further out or further in. So you could determine that as an artist also. Um, there is a technical way to do that and how to figure it out. But for the course, we're just going to be doing basic shapes and working with squares and whatnot. So if we need to have, a, if we have some occlusion on this side and we have occlusion on this side, I'm going to turn the paper also so I can bring out some occlusion on this cube. Something like that. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil again, or actually just use one of these other guys. I'm going to sharpen my pencil again, or actually just use one of these other guys. This one right here that I'm going to use is called an ebony pencil. They call it ebony because it's totally just all graphite. And it's very, very dark. It's woodless, and it's pretty much all graphite, and it has wax around it, I think because it's shiny around the outside. What it does is it's a very dark pencil and you don't have to push very hard. So you can kind of come in here and finish up this gradation like we did before. See, that's how I was able to uh, 
put in the gradation and the gradation from uh, this point to this point to this point from this point on uh, you're just going to have you know, a line here of gradation from the darkest points to the lightest points and that's important because it shows transition and shows contrast contrasting colors and so you can see i think it's because i'm having a reflection off the the light which probably should get a book or something to put underneath it put this under here i'm having a reflection come off which looks weird Anyway, so uh, to kind of see how what that drawing is doing, I need to come over here and add this core shadow. So that's the bounce light is coming from here and hitting there. And, you know, we're just having fun with squares and shapes and all kinds. So this is a core shadow. Because it shows a reflection in a sense of the table or the surface that it's staying on on top of. This right here is called a highlight. We got a highlight on top. This is our light source. And and all stuff. So this kind of concludes basically what I've been talking about. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you later. This is Christopher Stapleton from Cool White Fire Studio. And uh, enjoy the journey. Happiness is in the, uh, the process, not the destination. All right, take care. Have a good one. Yep, bye.